Three astronauts on China's Tiangong space station are suddenly facing an unexpected challenge after space debris damaged their Shenzhou-20 return capsule. In response, China has activated its rescue plan and is preparing the backup spacecraft Shenzhou-21 for their journey home. Engineers are running full safety tests, the crew remains stable, and operations continue normally. Here's how China is coordinating this rescue and what it means for human spaceflight. The Shenzhou-20 mission was originally expected to follow a smooth routine, six months in orbit, a planned handover, and a safe landing back on Earth. Everything changed when a fragment of space debris unexpectedly impacted their return capsule. According to the China Manned Space Agency, CMSA, the object struck the craft last week, compromising its ability to safely perform re-entry. Even though the station itself wasn't damaged, and the astronauts were never in immediate danger, the capsule structure must be absolutely flawless for the intense forces and temperatures of atmospheric return. A single compromise component is enough to ground the entire vehicle. This debris incident didn't come out of nowhere. Low Earth orbit has been getting increasingly cluttered with inactive satellites, spent rocket stages, and tiny fragments of material traveling up to 28,000 km per hour. It doesn't take a large piece to cause a mission-altering event. Even a small metal shard can damage critical systems on a spacecraft. For Shinjo-20, it was simply bad luck paired with a growing global challenge. Immediately after the impact was detected, CMSA initiated its contingency protocols. These procedures exist precisely for scenarios like this. The astronauts, Wang Jie, Chen Zhongrui, and Shen Dong, shifted from return preparation mode to extended mission mode, which includes reserving supplies, adjusting routines, and conducting system checks. The station was originally designed to support up to six astronauts temporarily, so living conditions remain stable and manageable. Despite the delay, the crew continues to operate normally. They are participating in scientific experiments, coordinating with mission control, and working alongside the newly arrived Shinjo-21 team. Before the debris incident even occurred, the Shinjo-21 spacecraft, fully operational and crewed, had arrived at Tiangong on November 1st. This vehicle now plays a new role. It's the return craft assigned to bring the Shinjo-20 astronauts home. China's spaceflight architecture was designed with this redundancy in mind. Each rotation crew arrives with a fresh return capsule that automatically becomes the emergency backup for the team already aboard. In other words, China always keeps an escape vehicle docked and ready. Now that Shenzhou-20's capsule is off the table, engineers are giving the Shenzhou-21 craft a full diagnostic campaign. These tests include thermal shield verification, propulsion system checks, environmental control and life support analysis, re-entry navigation system testing, and pressure seal confirmation. None of these tests can be rushed. Human space flight demands precision, and CMSA has made it clear that safety is the top priority, even if it means delaying announcements about the landing date. As these tests unfold, both crews on board Tiangong are participating in drills. These involve simulated emergency procedures, landing rehearsals, and system handovers. With six astronauts now aboard the station, Tiangong is at full temporary capacity, but it was designed exactly for this scenario. The structure includes expanded living quarters, emergency supplies, and shared workspaces that support two crews without crowding. The presence of the Shenzhou-21 team also adds operational resilience. Their spacecraft is fresh, recently checked, and already integrated into station systems. What's more, their arrival less than two weeks before the debris incident turned out to be extremely fortunate. If Shinjo-21 had arrived later, the Shinjo-20 crew might have faced a far longer delay while waiting for a rescue craft to be launched from Earth. Although CMSA has not announced the return date, their public statements indicate confidence. They describe the process as steady and according to plan, suggesting that all initial diagnostics are progressing without major issues. Once the capsule completes its preparation cycle and receives final approval, the agency will choose the landing window, likely coordinated with airspace closures similar to the ones recently noted in official Chinese government notices.
The Shinjo 20 incident is not an isolated case. It's part of a growing pattern that highlights the vulnerability of astronauts in low Earth orbit. Just a few months ago, NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams saw their one-week mission turn into a nine-month stay aboard the International Space Station because of technical problems with Boeing's Starliner vehicle. While the cause was different, the result was remarkably similar. Astronauts stuck in orbit longer than planned, relying on backup strategies to eventually return home. These back-to-back -back incidents underscore an evolving truth. Space agencies around the world must rethink their approach to rescue readiness. With thousands of satellites now orbiting Earth, many of them commercial, the amount of debris has skyrocketed. Even with sophisticated tracking networks, not all small fragments can be detected. A collision doesn't require a catastrophic impact. A stray bolt or millimeter-sized chip of metal can disable critical systems. The Shinjo 20 case is a stark reminder of this reality. Experts interviewed in the Space.com report referred to these events as a wake-up call for the global space community. They argue that as human spaceflight expands, we need better rescue options. Possibly dedicated rescue spacecraft, international collaboration on emergency protocols, and more robust shielding designs for capsules and stations. Tiangong's redundancy saved Shinjo 20 from being stranded indefinitely. The ISS has similar safeguards, but not all future private or national stations may have built-in rescue infrastructure unless policies change. Beyond rescue planning, the debris issue itself demands attention. Debris mitigation policies exist, but enforcement across nations and private companies remains inconsistent. Some countries are improving rules for deorbiting satellites at end of life, but the long lifespan of older debris means the current environment will remain hazardous for decades. China's handling of this incident also reveals something significant about the maturity of its space program. Being able to support two crews, maintain dual dock capsules, and coordinate rapid rescue planning shows that China is positioning itself not just as a capable spacefaring nation, but as one preparing for long-term sustained human presence in orbit. The Shinjo 20 astronauts are safe, healthy, and continuing their mission aboard Tiangong, while engineers finalize checks on the Shinjo 21 return craft. China's space agency has taken a cautious and measured approach. Testing every system, preparing for every scenario, and ensuring the backup capsule is ready before allowing the crew to attempt re-entry. The exact landing date remains unannounced, but all indicators point to steady progress and full confidence in the rescue plan. This incident is more than a temporary delay. It reflects the growing complexity of human spaceflight, the need for robust contingency plans, and the rising challenge of space debris. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.